Amen. 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 Here in the power of Christ, we stand. Don't we need to be reminded of that every day? I know I need it. Thank you, Holly, David, Gian. I needed that. I needed that. Thanks, Stephen, for the batteries for these microphones. It sounds good. <laughs> sounds good. So we have a um, Lectio Divina imaginative reading discussion type format again today, and we'll have another one in a couple weeks uh, covering the passage of Jesus uh, in the storm, Jesus calming the storm. Um, but as I said in my, in my email this week, uh, we're covering John 3, 1 to 8. Um, and so just uh, similar in a Lectio Divina or um, divine reading is, is Lectio Divina in, in Latin. And uh, we read a passage or even a verse, just one verse of scripture uh, multiple times for our purposes here today as we've, as we've done in the past, which is two readings. But uh, originally in Lectio, Lectio Divina, you can read the same passage or verse um, five times, <laughs> to five, six times, um, and then meditate and then pray on it. Um, Yes, so, can I ask, where's Gian? Yes, thank you. I'm going to ask Gian to do the first reading of John 3, 1 to 8. Um, and then we'll have two minutes of reflection, and then we'll go over the questions. Um, so here's the... Okay, so just read, yeah, verses... Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the things you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying. You must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it's going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. And uh, if we could have the questions up on the screen. Jesus tries to teach Nicodemus that experiencing uh, entering is also a, uh, another way of saying it is receiving, receiving, experiencing the kingdom of God, which he has Jesus' own presence on earth has already started. Experiencing the kingdom of God is not necessarily about being born physically a second time. It's not being born a second time, which we see Nicodemus getting confused with that, but it's about being born from above, being born from above. That is, being reborn of the spirit to be spiritually transformed and renewed. How significant is it for you to be reborn of the spirit, to be spiritually transformed and renewed? Why or why not? We'll just give a couple minutes.
how significant is it for you to be reborn, to have uh, as the title for today is to experience the new birth that we have in the spirit, to be spiritually transformed and renewed. Why or, or why not? So we'll have 10 minutes of just hearing, uh, hearing from one another and from myself as well. But we have Deborah. I think it is very important and significant to be reborn, to be like Jesus, a spirit being. I think it might also be about baptism because when we're baptized, we're laid in the water and our sins are forgiven, and we are prayed over to receive the Holy Spirit from God. That is being spiritually transformed and renewed, given new spiritual bodies. Thank you. So <clears throat> Water baptism has been mentioned. I was also thinking about um, you know, the significance of our own uh, water baptism and what, what that was like um, for us in our faith journey. Feel free to, to reflect on that as well, um, about being reborn and renewed. Um, Christine. So <clears throat> I think it's incredibly significant because when we're reborn, it's kind of a new, becoming a new person. So it's putting off the old man, which is our human nature, which we all have. And I know myself better than anyone else. I know um, my weaknesses, my faults. Um, if it wasn't for the Holy Spirit guiding me and transforming me, I would not change. And so it's incredibly important in order to become more Christ-like, is to be able to um, allow the Spirit to be working within me and changing me. Thank you. I'd like to say... <laughs> okay. We'll have Arlene and then Fred. Um, to understand that we have human nature. That's a basic understanding. If we go on in our life just thinking, okay, this is life, I do what I want to do. But then to know that we have human nature, that it tends to be selfish, and there's a passage, I think, in... Second Corinthians 5, or the ambassadors for Christ, it's, it also tells not to be selfish, but to be thinking of others. And that's learning how to love other people in a bigger, better way. And that's, that's part of what I see in it. Learning to love others in a bigger and better way beyond our selfish nature. Thank you. Also, for those of you on watching us online, you can um, share your answers, and Stephen will read your answers. God told humans to be fruitful and multiply. So one of our very purposes of existing is to multiply. And when we're born, sometimes people th say things like, oh, you look just like your mom, or oh, you're the spitting image of your dad, or you're just like your father, you know. <laughs> and to be spiritually reborn from above, and to ultimately have that said about us spiritually, you're just like your father. That family resemblance, right? Wow. Yeah, we have Brother Manny here. Wow. Born from our Heavenly Father. That's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, to have the Spirit, with the Spirit of God, uh, as a human, you can do nothing without the Spirit. In other words, we cannot transform ourselves by ourselves, but we need uh, God's Spirit helping us, renewing us, but it needs the cooperation of the individual. Uh, it, 
is not that God will do everything. But I'd like to throw a question here. How does one receive the Holy Spirit? Mm, before we knew that you receive the Holy Spirit if you get baptized. So I'd like to throw, I would like to throw that question to us. Yeah. How are we sure we have the Holy Spirit? So something like that. How, we, how do we receive the Holy Spirit? What is from our experience or from what you all know from, from Scripture? We got Robin here. Yeah. <laughs> Eat the mic. Thanks very much for giving the chance. Uh, as far as how do we receive it, the Scripture says His Spirit joins with our spirit. It is a spiritual matter. Uh, I believe many years ago someone said that Jesus didn't come to save our dogs and our cats and our other animals because they are not capable of sin. They act on their own built-in instincts. We, on the other hand, we have spirit from birth. And when I was born, I was immediately christened into a mainstream church. And it was assumed in the family that I, therefore, was a Christian. Uh, as my folks later began attending radio in the late worldwide Church of God, they understood a slight difference. The difference was that baptism, or christening, was um, a deeply personal and important spiritual step in one's life. It re revolved around adult thinking and consensual particip participation in that very baptism. Because when I was christened, all I did was cry. <laughs> That's what my folks said. Yeah, there wasn't any participation but that. And so by age 18, I sought, and later that same year, received water baptism and the Holy Spirit. Because there was a spirit, I was adult, I was consensual, and it went on that way. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, Ezra. Um, I would like to answer uh, Kuyamani's question in my own personal life. It's also, scripturally it says the Holy Spirit is like the wind. And so, if you are led by the Holy Spirit, life is unpredictable but undeniable. Life is unpredictable but undeniable. You, can, you don't know where, this, where the wind, you see the effects of the wind. And you, you see that it's there, but you, you can't see the, the wind itself. You don't know where it comes, where, where the destination is. Um, it's kind of unpredictable, too. Uh, but so it is with, Jesus says, so it is with everyone born, born of the Spirit. Jesus says so many things that I don't understand. <laughs> We're still <laughs> processing what that what that means. We've got Holly over here. There's, he's, um, I just think it's so funny how Nicodemus, uh, he's trying to meet Jesus with Jesus in secrecy, and the first thing that Jesus says to him in the middle of the night is a riddle or something, something kind of that confuses him. Yeah. That was exactly what I was about to bring up, <laughs> is that it's confusing. It's like Nicodemus asked a question and then Jesus said something and he still was like, I do what? And then it's literally his job to teach scripture and to know all of it very deeply. And Jesus never flat out said how. It was very much like, it's like the wind. You don't understand it, but it is there and you can feel it. And yeah, it just, the fact that Nicodemus kept asking questions instead of just being confused I think that might be really significant too, is just to keep asking and asking like, I don't get it, I don't get it, I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And he, he meets us where we are, yeah? Okay, uh, I don't know who had their hand up first, but <laughs> oh, we got uh, Kevin, yeah. I do, I did, as Holly was talking, I 
I realize that the answer, I think, is a little bit further along in John chapter 3. Jesus says it himself, but go ahead, Kevin. Thank you. um, I was going to say it's significant to me is um, receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then that way you'll grow in grace and knowledge. Receiving the gift of the Spirit to grow in grace and knowledge in Christ. Here from Ed. Yeah, I think an important aspect of it, it's a change of the heart. That's what changes. When you come to that point or before that point, being born of a woman, you're indifferent toward God or maybe even hostile. And then when you're born from above, you completely transform. You have the heart of the Lord and you are the, uh, then the motivation to study his word and to follow it. When we're born from above, we have the heart of our Heavenly Father and therefore the motivation to be transformed and to live and love as, as he does. We got Frank over here. Um, and then after Frank, we can uh, go on to the next, the second reading. Yes, I was blessed this morning to speak to my sister-in-law's husband who's passing away. And, uh, you know, I prayed for God to work a miracle in which he would somehow revive and live on in this life. But he was able to talk to me, brother, you know, I'm going. And he says, I'll see you on the other side. The essence is that we can't continue this way. God doesn't want us to continue this way in this body, in this flesh. He wants us to make that transition to the spiritual life. And he was able to tell me that he knew that himself. He was ready and he was thankful. So I told him, yes, we'll see you on the other side. God was telling me this, the life of the spirit is, is real life. That's, that's real life. The, life. the life of God, the life of the spirit. Thank you. Um, those of you who uh, shared your answers online. Uh, we'll yeah, go we got ahead. a couple people who replied on the YouTube chat. Uh, Yvette Robinson says, This is the moment of conversion when you go from being spiritually dead to spiritually alive through Christ. To be transformed and renewed by the Holy Spirit is very important to me. And uh, Laura Eurista says, It is very significant to be reborn of the Spirit. Otherwise, I would be stuck in thinking about myself. But the Holy Spirit urges me to think beyond myself and my own needs to care for others. It's so beautiful hearing from from you all. I I learn so much and I hope you all learn learn so much too. Thank you, Laura and and Yoveta. Um and Laura, we're praying for you and, and Juan too. Um, uh, for me, uh, I, I can't I was struggling with the questions for, for this week. Um, but uh, thanks to prayers and, and God's help of course, I wanna come up with questions that are simple enough but I guess Deep, help us to deepen our understanding of of what our Lord Jesus is, is saying. And I, I put, I'm, I guess he led me to this question because I don't know how significant it has been for me until very recently to have a new birth. Uh, we hear about new creation, be, live, being a new creation, but have, like a literal spiritual new birth it's my first time actually like understanding my new creation self in Christ to be literally born from heaven, like from above. Um, and it, it's more significant to me now than it was seven days ago. Um, I'll just say that. So. All right, so. Um, David, may I ask you to read? Yeah. 
Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. Thank you. And um, our question for the second reading is, um, so this whole, this whole conversation between our Lord Jesus and Nicodemus, uh, one of the Pharisees and the Sanhedrin, this whole conversation is about how God provides his heavenly life and his spirit, which are from, from above, from, from heaven, to rebirth humanity from above. God provides his heavenly life and spirit to, to make us reborn uh, from above or from heavenly, the heavenly realms. How does this impact your understanding of the popularized verse, John 3, 16? John 3, 16, in the context of this conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus. I'll give two minutes. So again, this whole conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus is about how God provides his heavenly life and spirit to rebirth humanity from above. How does this impact your understanding of John 3, verse 16? Oh, okay, we got that for The conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus Excuse me. I imagine that God has a plan to give all of his creation new heavenly bodies. That is my impact of understanding John. 
John 3, 6. You heavenly bodies. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we got Chester here. Thank you. You know, uh, in thinking of terms about rebirth, when we think of John 3.16, one of the keys for me is God gave. So when we think of terms of rebirth, about being a light, about being salt of the earth, whether individually and or corporately, we want to think about giving to this world. We, we all can hurt, we all have our ups and downs, but if you are not reborn, you really hurt, you really have major downs. And so for me, God gave, God gave everything. You could even think in terms of, well, wasn't, couldn't God have been a better negotiator and not gave so much? No, he gave everything. And so, to the extent that we can, we, we want to be uh, giving that way. Mm. And that's, that's what it looks like to live in those heavenly bodies that Deborah mentioned, to live in that heavenly way, resembling our heavenly father, is to live sacrificially, is to live to receive and also give. There is joy in both giving and receiving. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you have Brother Manny here. I think I, I just looked at these questions this morning. And what I found out is one will receive the Holy Spirit once he believes. That's John 3, 16. And we, we have a supporting verse. In, in Ephesians 1, verse 13 and 14, we read here, In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believe in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. Uh, if you look at Revelation during the time, during the witness, uh, the uh, Verses about the 144,000 witnesses, there are many who were saved, but I don't think they were baptized. In other words, I'm not saying that we don't need to be baptized, those are not baptized, but it's, it's not a requirement for receiving the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you. I'm reminded of our uh, Father Abraham, <laughs> who is accounted righteous by God through... Faith, <laughs> faith, believing, believing and trusting. I'm, I'm not sure if he was uh, eventually water baptized, but he trusted God. That's faith. Choosing to believe that what God says is, I can trust that. I can trust that. Yeah. And the thoughts on... Let's just, let's just read John 3. I'll, I'm reading from the, what is this? Oh, the Amplified Version. Thanks again, Mike Corwin. Um, for, God, for God so greatly loved. Actually, you know what? Let's start at... Um, let's start at verse 13. Of John chapter three. Um, hold on, let me turn. John three thirteen. No one has gone up into heaven, but there is one who came down from heaven. Again, from from above. Okay, the Son of Man, and also the Holy Spirit comes from above. Verse 14, just as Moses lifted up, he's referring to uh, Numbers uh, 21. It says, Moses lifted up the bronze serpent in the desert on a pole so that those who look upon the serpent will not die from, from the snake bites but be saved. 
so must the Son of Man, him, Jesus, be lifted up. In other words, be lifted up on, on the cross. He continues, so that whoever believes in him will have eternal life. That is physical, after dying physically, will actually live forever. Verse 16, for God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he even gave his one and only begotten son so that whoever believes and trusts in him as savior, whoever believes and trusts in in him, the Son of God shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send the Son into the world to judge and condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. So I, I, I love how this translation, instead of just saying whoever believes, uh, he says believe, uh, whoever believes and trusts. Whoever believes and, like, so the faith and trust go hand in hand. We cannot trust God by having, but without having faith in Him, and we can't have, uh, we can't believe in Him without trusting Him. Um, and that, um, that to me, it 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 puts John three sixteen in a, in a different light. We're just so used to just quoting it or seeing it on, uh, I don't know, sports during sports events. <laughs> Yeah, the parts, yeah, 316. Um, <laughs> have Arlene over here. Um, but, like, n not a lot of people actually uh, tell you, you know, John 316 is, is, was supposed to be a secret conversation. Um, <laughs> and actually, later on in John chapter 3, John the baptizer actually repeats what Jesus said to Nicodemus. I realize, I think what Jesus told to Nicodemus, he told to John the baptizer. And, and anyways, it's just, it's cool making these connections. Yeah, go ahead. I think when I hear the use of both believe and trust, I think of something else where we'd like to have the faith. We don't have the feelings of faith. So we can say, God, I believe you, but I don't believe enough. So believe and trust, and we keep on asking God to give us more and more of both of those, let's say, for our everyday challenges and some super challenges. And um, we, we keep on looking in the Bible, and we find out, Oh, I just skipped over that before, but I didn't live that in the context of what I'm living today. So I really need that. And there are, there are so many scriptures and so many promises in the Bible that um, uh, what I'm saying is we need to invoke more of them. We quote them back to God. He says, oh, I'll send you help, so that comes to pass. But I mean, we can pray, and that's good. We can also invoke actual passages from the Bible. And some of the things that we um, have on our plate, I invoke a scripture in Psalms that says, God's throne, the king's throne, but the king is God, right? The king's throne is built on righteousness and justice. Mercy and truth go before him. And that's a pretty complete characterization of God. And there's another word in, we have righteousness and justice. Equity is another really good word. Okay, I've had enough. But, but we find good stuff. You know, we keep on finding good stuff by having curiosity. I want to thank my wife because she always has some very interesting things to say and a great knowledge of scripture. Uh, I want to point out one word at the beginning of John 3, 16. Most of the older translations start with the word for. 
more modern translations use because or for this reason. In my one that I've got in front of me right says, yes, well, what are they all talking about? It's not a standalone verse because you need to go backwards one verse and says, then everyone who believes in him can have eternal life. Why? He, because God loved the world. So 316 just links itself right back into the flow of what's going on here. And it explains, based on that very first word, this is the reason it's happening. It ain't anything we did, because it's by grace we are saved. What our responsibility is to respond in faith. Thank you, brother. Good word, good word. Stephen, do we have any? All right, we'll have, have people online. Uh, yep, we got a few people responding on the YouTube chat again. Uh, Lupe Marquez says, uh, to be born of the Spirit is our final destination and our most precious desire. And uh, Laura Eurista says, this makes it more clear to me that God intends for all the world, all humanity, to be a part of his family. He loves all his children and wants none to perish. His desire is for all to be saved. And Janice Hauser says, to be born of the Spirit is to be given the Holy Spirit. Because we first lived in God, the Father, Jesus, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Are we able to see, is, is the chat um, recorded or something? OK, yeah, that's great. Thank you all so much. Well, I hope <laughs> that going through all of John 3 kind of helps us um, to see this in a, in a fresh, uh, new, newer way. Um, I, I know for me, John 3.16, I, I now I want to see it from the context of what Jesus was trying to get across, that we he wants every person to be born again, not a second time necessarily, <laughs> but uh, to be reborn. He's talking about what, what we've been already been talking about the past few weeks about what the Holy Spirit uh, helps us to do, regeneration, renewal, rebirth. It's all about being reborn, but born from, from above where, where God the Father is, where God the Son is, and where God the Holy Spirit is from. And as Arlene was talking about, um, you know, God is righteous, God is good, God is just, God is, has mercy, Linking that back to what Fred said earlier about looking like our Father. How often do I want to describe myself? Am I righteous? Am, am I really good? Am I just? Am I used to seeing myself as truly a good person? Because God would not have become incarnate in the Son of God if He weren't, if He didn't truly believe in the inherent goodness of humanity that he originally created us in. Because when he first created us, he didn't say, oh, that's, that's kind of bad. <laughs> oh, I should have done a better job. He said, that is, it is very good. That is our primary, primary identity. Not to, not to boast about our, our own goodness, but we are good because our Father is good. That he has made us good. We have our Father's DNA spiritual DNA. We have the power to, to be the good, righteous, just, merciful, forgiving. How hard, almost impossible is it for us to forgive? But in the power and the strength that our Heavenly Father gives us, we can, in fact, forgive as He has forgiven us. And don't we need that in our relationships? Amen. <laughs> We need, that we, we need to see more mercy and justice and forgiveness in, in our world. And so every week we, we celebrate our, our union, our union and communion with, with our Heavenly Father, with, with the Son of God, with the Holy Spirit. So for those of you joining us online, um, 
You can grab your a cracker, bread, and, and juice, or wine uh, as symbols as of, of the elements that of the Lord Jesus has, has taught us that these, these elements represent, yes, the Lamb of God that was slain before the foundation of the world to unite all of humanity and act all of creation along, all, can I have a, all of creation along with humanity back to God. One of the scriptures that I believe Jesus was referring to, because um, the Old Testament, sometimes we, we, when we start reading the New Testament, we kind of forget everything that happened in the Old Testament. Now, Je- this is Jesus' Bible. He was always referring uh, back to this. There's always, there's so many, there's all these, oh, please, there's all these hyperlinks, uh, these different connections. Um, think of the Bible as, uh, what I'm learning is as an aspen grove, all the roots are connected, all the shoots are connected. Thank you. So one of the verses that he was referring to is Ezekiel 36, 25 to 27, uh, referring to being reborn of water and spirit. Ezekiel 36, starting at verse 25, I will sprinkle, this is God speaking, I will sprinkle clean water, clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart, God says. I will put a new spirit in you, God says. I will remove from you your your heart of stone, that selfishness that, that was talking about today. I will remove from you your heart of stone and will give you a soft heart, a heart that can receive, that can receive my me. I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. And laws, the, the laws of God are good. They're about justice and, and, and mercy and equity. And Jesus was also talking about Isaiah 44, verse 3. I will pour water on the thirsty, I will pour water on the thirsty land, streams on the dry ground. I will pour out my spirit on your offspring. What does that sound like? I will pour out my spirit upon you and your sons and your daughters. Yes. Acts 2, <laughs> Pentecost. I will pour, and also in, in uh, the scroll of Joel, Joel, I will pour out my spirit upon you and your sons and daughters will prophesy. And going back to Isaiah 44, I will pour out my spirit on your offspring and my blessing, my blessing of transformation my blessing of, of, of renewal and rebirth, I will put that on you and your descendants. And by faith, we are in fact, we are in fact the, the descendants of Abraham and we receive the blessings that was given to God through him that is, it was intended for all the nations. So we praise, we praise you, Lord Jesus. We praise you, Lord Jesus, for giving us Everything, forgiving, forgiving us yourself. Let me just go. We praise you, Lord Jesus, for giving us yourself, for in giving us yourself to unite us to yourself. You gave us everything. So we praise you and we thank you as we celebrate each week and partake of the elements that symbolize your broken body and your shed blood broken to make us whole, to make us whole like our Heavenly Father. We thank you. Let us partake together. And the blood which cleanses us from our selfishness and and sin and makes us new, clean human beings. Let's partake. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, thank you. 
we just come before you with gratitude because of your love that you so greatly loved this world that turned turn our backs on you. We became your enemies. We even hated you. <sighs> but you showed us your character. You showed us your, your, your love so that we, your children, you could love you in return. So I ask for your spirit to help us to love as you love, to help us to live as you live, to live with courage, to live with purpose, but to live with passion, to live with every single day, knowing that, 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 that your, your presence, your, 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 your kingdom just seeks to soak every, every inch of this world, every inch of this universe. And, 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 and your justice and mercy, it, it starts in the hearts, in the, in the souls, in the minds of these amazing creatures you call human beings. So that we, we cry out, Abba, Father, who am I that you are mindful of me? And, and you say, I am yours, you are mine. So as yours, God, we, we give allegiance to you. We give allegiance to our Lord Jesus as our Lord and, and uh, the Savior of our, of our souls, the Savior of our lives, who gives us light and life and meaning. Help us to participate in your mission, God, and your global eternal purposes. Thank you, and we praise you and lift all of these things to you. In your name, we ask and pray. Amen.